we all love the famous binary search algorithm, right? It makes searching so much easier and so much faster. Look to the smaller elements on the left and larger elements on the right. You keep on doing this recursively in a divide and conquer fashion until you can determine if an element is present or not. But there is a limitation. You can only apply this binary search algorithm to some kind of a list data structure or an array data structure where your all of your data is linear, right? But what happens when you want to search in a tree kind of a data structure? I believe that early programmers had such a kind of a difficulty and hence they came up with this concept of binary search tree. So let us see what is all the fuss about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. Today, I want to discuss the basics of a binary search tree, the terms associated with it, and how do you actually go about creating one. So when you say a binary search tree, what does it actually mean? To put everything in a nutshell, a binary search tree is a very specific case of a binary tree where all the elements to the left of the parent node are smaller than the parent node and all the elements to the right of the parent node are larger than the parent node. Does it make some sense now? I guess I have been talking too much little now. So let us quickly get into action and start creating binary search tree. So first of all, I would like to say that whenever you are trying to learn a new concept, we must first try to understand why do we even need to learn it? What were the limitations in the original concept that we had to make an enhancement to it? So taking a quick recap, what do you understand when I say a tree data structure? What you have in front of you is a generic tree data structure, right? There is a root and you have certain nodes, right? Each of these nodes can have n number of children. For example, the root node has three children. The node number three has only one child. Node number seven again has three children, correct? So in a generic tree, each node can have none or any number of children. For example, node number nine can again have four children. There is no limit. So creating a data structure for such a kind of a tree was a little tricky. How do you maintain the number of children each node have? How do you traverse a tree? So to make things a little bit simpler, what we did is we tried creating a binary tree. So what we did is we created a tree that looks like this. In this tree, the condition is that each node can only have a maximum of two children. So look at it closely. You have a root node and it has two children, two and three. Once again, node number two has two children, four and five. Node number three has two children, six and seven. Node number six does not have any children and that is fine. And node number nine only has one child and that is fine too. Because in a binary tree, you cannot have more than two children. And that is why the term binary, right? Now, if you see creating a data structure, and writing code for this kind of a tree also became easier. You simply created a data structure like this, where the value represents the value of the node, the left would represent the left subtree, and right would represent the right subtree. Correct? Okay, everything was going good and you were able to create trees. Now, the problem came when you had to search for certain elements. If I ask you to search for the element 11 in this tree, what will you do? You will have to iterate through this entire tree, right? You will be doing one of the traversal techniques. Either you will do a pre-order traversal or you will do a level order traversal or you will do some kind of a post-order traversal to check if 11 is present in this tree, right? Hence, in a way, in the worst condition, you have to iterate through all of the nodes. And that is what caused the problem. You were taking a lot of time just to determine if an element is present in the tree or not. And hence, there was a need to enhance this data structure to create a specific case where you could make searching very, very simple. Because if you think about it, searching is the primary concept 
or the fundamental thing when it comes to computer programming you always start with searching so there was a need of binary search trees so how does a binary search tree look like what you have in front of you is called as a binary search tree now the first question that should come to your mind is what is so special about this tree it looks as similar as a binary tree right that is what i told you a binary search tree is a specialized case of a binary tree so every binary search tree is definitely a binary tree let us look at it even closely if you look at the elements of this binary search tree what do you see over here this is the root node right or the parent node it has a value of 10 look at all the elements in the right subtree of the parent node all of these elements are larger than 10 correct and now look at all the elements in the left subtree of the parent node all of these values are less than 10 right so this is the specialized version or you can say the special condition of a binary search tree all the elements in the right subtree should be greater than the parent node and all the elements in the left subtree should be less than the parent node so we can say that a binary tree is classified to be a binary search tree if it has a parent node and it will have two child nodes right then all the elements in the left subtree should be smaller than the parent node and all the elements in the right subtree should be greater than the parent node do note that this condition is true for every single node it is not possible that this condition is only satisfied with the parent node or the root node this condition will be true for every other node in the tree as well for example look at this segment of the subtree you have the parent node as 15 and look at the left child this is smaller than 15 right and then look at 18 this is larger than 15 so this condition of binary search tree will exist through each and every node for example let us look at one more node and let us look at node number 5 now node number 5 has two subtrees this is the left subtree and this is the right subtree just compare the values 1 and 3 will be smaller than 5 and 7 and 6 will be greater than 5 so this is how a binary search tree looks like so the question has to be asked what is so special about it how does it make searching easier let us say i have to look for the element 13 in the tree what would happen if this was a general tree you would iterate through each of the element right and then ultimately find okay 13 is present but let us try to take advantage of a binary search tree you look at the first element that is 10 and what is the element that you have to search you have to search for 13 13 is greater than 10 right and hence it is not possible that you will find 13 in the left subtree so simply what you can say is once you see the element 10 you can now move on to the right subtree you don't have to go to the left subtree at all so now you reach the element 15 once again apply the same technique compare 15 with 13 13 is smaller than 15 and hence you have to look in the left subtree because here you will find all the smaller elements right so simply what you can do is you can read element 15 and then move on to the left subtree you reach the next element and then you see 13 and voila you were able to find this element how many steps did you take you just took three steps right that is so much faster than using the conventional techniques of searching once again let us try to look at an element that is not present let us try to search for element number 8 what do you do you start with the first element and that is 10 now 10 is greater than 8 so you will look in the left subtree so i start off with my element 10 and then i move on to my left subtree next i compare 5 and 8 now 8 is larger so i will move on to my right subtree i read 5 and then i moving on to my right subtree 
now we will compare 7 and 8 now 8 is larger right that means i will look in the right subtree of 7 what happens i read 7 and then i don't see anything over here i encountered a null that means 8 was not present in my binary search tree so you see how searching became so fast let us quickly do one more example and we will try to search for the element number 6 you start with 10 and then you move on to the left subtree then 6 is greater so you move on to the right subtree then 6 is smaller than 7 so you move on to the left subtree and voila you found the element 6 so this is how a binary search tree really speeds up the way in which you are searching for elements i hope this is all making some sense now so how do you actually create a binary search tree let us understand that with an example trust me this is gonna be fun we have the same nodes and we will try to create binary search tree it is very very simple first of all what i'm gonna do is i will use this set of nodes and create a generic binary tree that you already know about so what do you do in a binary tree you will take up this node and assign it as the root node then you will keep on taking elements and you will assign two nodes to each of the parent node right you continue this process with all the other nodes and what you will do is you will assign two child nodes to each of the parent node because that is the condition for a binary tree right so i will quickly add all of these remaining elements as well and you can add elements anywhere right you just have to make sure that each node has a maximum of two child nodes okay now we are done so this is how a generic binary tree would look like now we want to create a binary search tree let us quickly explore it so in a binary search tree what you're gonna do is you will start off with the first node as you did you took the first node and this will be your root node right now take up the second element 5 now 5 is smaller than 10 right so move 5 as the left subtree of your parent node so far so good cool now look at the next element this is 13 right start with the root element every time you see 13 is greater than 10 that means it will be a part of the right subtree so i will place 13 over here and connect it to my root node move ahead with element number 16 always start with the root node see 16 is greater than 10 that means it will go in the right subtree but you see 13 is already present over here so compare 13 and 16 16 is larger than 13 and hence 16 will go to the right subtree of 13 and just connect these two nodes keep doing this process take up the next node and that is 8 compare 8 and 10 8 is smaller so we come over here now compare 5 and 8 8 is larger than 5 so i will assign 8 to the right node of node number 5 similarly we have node number 4 4 is smaller than 10 so go to left 4 is smaller than 5 so go to left again and you stop over here you assign the node similarly for node number 14 14 is greater than 10 14 is greater than 13 and then 14 is less than 16 so it comes over here i will assign the last three nodes for you and you can figure them out as an exercise cool so we are done now and this is how a binary search tree will be created from these nodes if you look closely all of these elements are lesser than 10 and all of these elements are greater than 10 and this property of binary search tree is applicable to all of the subtrees as well just explore all of these nodes as an exercise and you will start to understand it very quickly you can easily see how searching will be so fast St search for 8 less than 10 greater than 5 and voila you found 8 
in fact the first complexity of a binary search tree is order of n log n and that is very similar to the binary search algorithm that is why i started this video with talking about the binary search and it also works on the divide and conquer algorithmic paradigm because every time you're dividing the problem into two halves right and this is how a binary search tree works i hope i was able to simplify the binary search tree and it's working for you do note that the binary search tree is a very important concept and it is a must have toolbox in your toolkit when it comes to writing data structures as per my final thoughts i just want to say that a binary search tree is a kind of data structure which will help you to organize your data in a very nice way what will happen is you can always separate your data in two parts some elements that are larger some elements that are smaller so based upon certain conditions you can always trim out some portion of your data set that way you can reduce the search space and ultimately you are spending less time to search through your database this will give you a better time complexity i know that in this video i have just been covering the basics of a binary search tree in my next videos i will actually show you how you can go about deleting elements in a binary search tree and how do you write the code to make one so just tell me in the comment section below what all problems did you face tell me where did you see the concept of a binary search tree which problems did you face where you had to create a binary search tree i want to know everything and want to discuss everything with you you would be also glad to know that a text based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com a pretty handy website to help you out with your programming needs i am including a link in the description below in case you want to check it out as a reminder if you found this video helpful please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends this motivates me to make more and more such videos where i can simplify programming for you also let me know what you want to learn next i have some more videos on binary trees coming up for you until then see ya